Hi plebs. Um, in this video, I want to cover very briefly how to create um, an API endpoint using the Ignition Web Dev module. We're going to do it using uh, a specific type of Python or a specific type of web dev resource called a Python resource. Let me log in real quick into my Maker Designer and open my project. So specifically what we're going to do is we are going to create an API endpoint to read one of our tag values. And hopefully, so at first we'll specify a tag path and then hopefully we can create it um, generic enough so that we can just pass in a tag path as a string and it return the tag value for us. So let's go ahead and go to our web dev module, right click, I'm going to create a folder just to keep it organized. Um, inside the API folder, let me create a new Python resource. This is one of the resource types um, that we'll cover that are in the web dev module. Let's name this git tag value. We hit create resource. A couple things before we get started writing code. Um, up here is the most important thing is a drop down menu for your HTTP method. Um, we want do git. There's do post, do put, do delete. Um, you can Google MDN um, HTTP methods and you'll probably get, there you go. And you can read through the different types of HTTP methods and what they do. Um, a little convention I use to remember what they do. Um, I treat do get at like a SQL select um, so it returns data in a do post, like an insert. Uh, that's just a rough way to remember what each of the functions do. Um, a do is essentially used just to retrieve data. A post can um, post data, so send data to a server and also retrieve. And then there are different ones like delete and options and patch. And then you choose your options here, whether you want um, the secure HTTPS, the encrypted one and whether you want to require authentication. Um, but for now, let's let's get started on our API endpoint. Uh, in the designer for both Maker and the full version of Ignition, if you hit the F1 key, it brings up the documentation, which is helpful. I know there's a function to read a tag called read blocking. There we go, system.tag. Let me actually um, open this page here. I know there's there's a read blocking and a read async. Um, asynchronously reads the value of the tags of the given paths. Oh, you need a callback function. So in this case, um, our tag will most likely be available for us to read. So we can read blocking. And then you can also specify a timeout just in case you're worried it might hang up your process or something like that. So the read blocking function takes a list of tag paths and then an optional parameter is the timeout and then re it returns a qualified value. So let's go back here and say tag value, this will be our variable is equal to system.tag.readblocking and then we pass in our tag path here and then we will return, so right now it says return HTML. So let's actually comment this out here and let's save. Um, let's go tools, launch web dev, launch resource. And we can see that even doing, doing nothing for our endpoint, it already defaults to um, this sort of behavior. So it's returning a type of HTML, the response is in HTML and then here's the, the response string. So it's just a very simple HTML formatted string that returns the words hello world as we see here when we target the, the endpoint here. So let's change that. Let's uncomment this line here. Instead of HTML, let, let's return it as a JSON. And where I'm getting it from is right here. So you have your HTML and then you also have your JSON dictionary. You can also return a file <clears throat> in bytes. For example, if you want to return a picture, you can return it as bytes. 
So let's specify that and then let's specify, let's return a dictionary called called um, tag value or let's return a dictionary with a key of tag value and then return our value. But of course we need to specify our, our tag here so let me go and try to find a tag something like uptime seconds because it changes so we can see if it's actually reading it every time we run or we target our endpoint. Copy tag path here and we paste in here and let's see what that gives us. I'm going to, you can do it in the browser like I did before to return HTML but since it's returning JSON I want to see it formatted prettier so I'm going to use postman here. Okay let's have that open um, let me go copy my URL here, go back to Postman, um, paste your URL there and make sure since we're using, sorry, since we're using a get HTTP method here, make sure to select git as your method. Here are some of the similar methods that Ignition Web Dev has available for the Python resource type. Um, we don't have any params or headers or a body. This is very simple. Let's just hit send here. And we get an error. Um, so cannot coerce value into list. Um, let's figure out what's going on. Okay, it takes a, a list parameter and I specified a string. Okay, so let's just put this inside a list here. Let's save and go back to our postman, hit send, and and we're returning nothing. Okay, so let's go back to our browser. We can use our browser just to see if it's logging something. So let me refresh that, hit the F5 key, it's still returning nothing. The console is empty. Um, I hit the F12 key to open the Chrome web um, web console and we are still not returning any value. So in this case what I like to do is cast it to a string and return it that way to see the format that it's being returned in. So let's go ahead and send and we can see that our tag value here is a list and then a list and then it should be dot value here because a qualified value, so qualified value opens in a new tab. Um, okay, there's three basic things with the qualified value. I'm not sure why that's opening. Oh, okay, so here it is, value, quality, and timestamp. So value, quality, timestamp corresponds to here, value, quality, and timestamp. So we want the value. So we want the zeroth index of our list and then the zeroth index, of course, contains our qualified value. And then we want the value of that. So let's go back here. Um, remove the string since we already found out what our format is. What our format is. And then we want the zeroth index here dot value. And that should return our integer value as we want to. So there it is, 87, 921. If we refresh, it's 927. This is uptime, so this is in seconds. If, re if you refresh every second, you can see that this value keeps updating. Okay, that's good. But what if you want to pass in this tag path or a list of tag paths and return all of the values of the list? Uh, let's actually just focus on passing in one tag path. So what you can do in that instance is we have our arguments here. We have a request data this request data will come from our will come from our request body here. So if we want to send a request data, we're going to add it here. So it's pretty simple to send data to your API endpoint. You just want to make sure to choose body here and then choose raw and then JSON. And here we want to specify our tag path. Tag path will be this value here. Uh, you have to make sure to use double quotes because that's what the JSON standard or notation requires. 
So in the tag path, let's copy our same path just to see if we're doing things correctly to see if it returns a similar integer. Okay, so when we send, nothing's going to change because we're not actually looking at our request data yet. But we can be, so let's let us replace this string here with our request, or actually let's log it first. So let's return this. I found that this way is the easiest way to debug. So you just want a return statement before this second return, and then it's going to return whatever is here. And it's useful to debug because you can't print, um, you can't use system perspective print from a web dev endpoint or from the web dev Python resource. Well, you can, but you need to specify a session ID and a page ID, which we will cover in another video, but that's a little bit more complicated. So let's return here um, our request and then data. So request, request, and then our data key. And hopefully, so this one, these two lines won't be executed because of our first return here. I just want to see what we will get back. So we should be getting our string back. Okay, so we have a tag path. Okay, so let's specify here our tag path and save. Realize that we only need to, take, to add a tag path here because we specified it here. If we just passed in a string and had this as text, for example, we wouldn't need to do that. That's why it's useful to to uh, look at these return statements and return return it before. That way you can see what the format is or even sometimes cast it as a string like we saw in this example here. So in this case, the return data tag path should be returning our string that we pass in. Okay, let's go back. And it is. It's returning it weird. I'm not sure why. System gateway. Okay, so let's send that again. Okay, I think that will still work. Oh, we probably have to cast it as a string. Okay, so we know what the format is. Let's pass, this is acts as our parameter. Let's copy this here and paste it within our list. There we go. And this we can get rid of now that we know what our format is. There we go. Let's save. And this should work. So let's go back. We're specifying a tag path and, about, and its value. And we should be getting back the uptime seconds in integer like we did earlier. And there we go. So we see 88, 188, uh, 192, 193, 195. Okay, so it's returning our value just as we wanted it. And just to make sure that it's actually doing what we what we think it is, let's find another. So let's find another value here. So memory utilization is 0 0.18. Um, let's copy this tag path here. Go back to our postman, and let's specify this one here instead of uptime seconds. Okay, and let's hit send and we're getting back our value. So we see now that we can specify a tag and then get the value. So this is an example of a very simple API, but it really gets the juices flowing and you can see, start seeing the powerful nature of the web dev module and these API endpoints that you can create. So that's it for me for this video. Um, comment if you want to see other specialized endpoints or generic endpoints. Um, I'm, an, I'm going to keep creating these sorts of videos, short clips, to try to help people out there starting in Ignition. Uh, the next video we will look at retrieving values from our database. I have a MySQL database and we will create a similar endpoint here and retrieve some of, our, some of the values in the database. That's it for me. Thank you for watching and have a nice evening.